I'll tell you this story. At least I'll tell you how I, a few factors about the story. The very uh, first thing that I want to show you is or the uh, article that from the House Beautiful magazine, which I cut out in 1963. And this was something that I posted in my studio at Stanford. It was the only thing I really knew about O'Keefe at the time. But I decided to go and see her. And so I sent, I sent her, I'd like you to turn your cell phone off. I sent her this card. And I'm sorry, I sent her a card. And this was her answer. Yes, come and visit. Thanks for your page. Starlight Night. And after that, uh, I left Alvarado Row, 587 Alvarado Row, and uh, drove to see her. And after the visit with her, I wrote her a letter. Then, and it starts, Dear Miss O'Keefe, let me apologize for the long delay before thanking you for your hospitality during our visit in June. I waited because the visit with you meant more than I, as I reflected on it, and a way to answer you and thank you only came slowly during that time. This is dated July 25th, 1964. There is a shell picture for you, no substitute for the actual one. And this it came to me, the article by Nina Lean um, was photographed shells that were cast off cast-offs from the ocean. And this in particular, there was a full-page poached egg cowrie. This three-inch study specimen looks like a piece of rare porcelain, a model of symmetry commonly found on the shallow reefs of the Philippines. It's inhabited by a black snail that covers its shell with a black mantle. And I sent just the picture to her and uh, and folded it in this letter, which was written uh, on a selector. This is my copy. Uh, the office that I worked in had these typewriters, and so that was fortunate because I wouldn't have had a copy otherwise. This is a carbon copy of that letter, and so that takes care of the shell. Now, after that, I was in touch with her when I was at, uh, I left Stanford, and of course, uh, I made the visit. Then two years later, after New York, I went to Montero, California, and I produced a number of uh, pieces that were small, and I sent them to her in a book. And this is the label that she returned the book uh, to me. It was November 3rd, 1966. When I finally arrived at her home in 1966 for my second visit, I took these three pictures of the uh, cliffs and her dog. And then uh, these are just a, a couple of item, items I put in. A gift in 1968 of a chair and a skull which I was holding here, but this is O'Keefe as I knew her in the dress that she wore. Now we're going to start on why she sent me these letters. In 1968, that first letter arrived, and this book shows that there are a number of 20 letters from me, but maybe even more, uh, from July 3rd, 1968 through June 19th, 1973. There are 20 pieces of correspondence from O'Keefe uh, the first of which, of course, is the, uh, she did ask for this, my first, uh, after my f second, uh, no, let's see, the 1968 visit, which was the third visit, 64, 66, and then 68, uh, she requested this, to purchase this piece of work, which has been documented elsewhere, and, and that was the letter. And I then received a check of course, I started to save her letters uh, that 
ran from 68 through 71 with the letters and the envelopes with the postmarks. And uh, I kept them uh, in pretty good condition. Here she says, do not inconvenience yourself to get the black creation to me. I hope you are well and can be at work. These are w uh, letters about the checks. I told her in December 3rd of 68, I'm preparing to come north to bring obsidian. Please tell me if January 4th is a convenient time. And these letters were uh, often, uh, what I would say, my saved copies. In other words, I wrote in a calligraphy, usually, but I just kept, kept a, a plain ink copy of what I said to her. She says here, I intend to go to Yucatan with friends. That was in 68. Then at Christmas, I, I was received this Christmas card from her, greeting card. Then the Stan Hope was a very nice letter. Here she talks about, yesterday I was at Nerdler's for something of my own. And of course, Nerdler's, you remember, is the gallery that um, Winslow Homer dealt with in New York. It's a fine gallery. And she said, I told them of your, my interest in your work, as your work is difficult to move. And I think one of their men will come out to Abiquiu to see it, if you can get there with it. And then I plan to be in Abiquiu by next Saturday. Have you finished the other paintings you intended to do? So she was quite interested in what I was doing. And here in June of that uh, same year that uh, she had shingles, which was devastating to her, 1969, and had sent me a telegram. However, I didn't get it, and I had left. And by the time I arrived, uh, of course, she was still in pain, but did see me. And it was, uh, she said, here, she's writing another letter, 618. I think I told you I was having shingles. I'm really not well enough to see you now. And then finally, in this one, this letter came again while I was on my way. This was one, uh, I mean, June of 7, June 7, 1969. I'm glad you are coming later. I've had four or five weeks of shingles and I'm not much good. You can see how her, her uh, let, how illegible her handwriting is. It's very small, very different. Shows the pain she was in. So then there's a big visit here, of course, and we have talked about that, about the bud uh, leaving that at the ranch because she said she could do better with it than I could. She was willing to try to sell it for me. And uh, my I did eventually leave it. This letter is back when I'm back at home in Mexico telling her it was an honor for her, her to hang my work in her ranch and that uh, something about the weather and so on there. And then uh, Jerry, her cook, wrote on her own because she was quite fond of me and, and decided she wanted a chihuahua dog and she thought perhaps I could bring her one from Mexico. So she uh, actually uh, wrote this letter on her own. She wanted me to bring her some caffeine. Ca caffeine aspirina is what they called it. Caffeine in aspirin, which was sold in Mexico. And I don't know if it ever was sold here. So she also mentioned, strangely, that the object that I had left was hung in the dining room. And um, the picture you left at the ranch is in the di di dinner room wall, looks very nice, and uh, that was the bud that we have talked about. So O'Keefe did, did hang it and did like it. I then was in dire straits and I left this, I, I talked about the burdens of the year that were eased by her purchase of the black form and that I was still living, I needed uh, under living difficult living factors were weighing heavily against form production. This was actually a carbon, I believe this is carbon, 
of lined paper. I put a piece of carbon paper between it and actually wrote to her on another piece of lined paper. Then a check will go to you as last year, that's October of 20, 26 of, of 69. I may not write more, but it isn't important. All that I can see is important is that you work. And again, this check came because your, your address was lost. I'm sorry it took so long. And then a check for 2000 arrived. Thank you for your help, I wrote back. And then again, Jerry wrote to me. What was the date for that one? Uh, well, the last one was uh, December 1, 1969. All right. I, I, don't, her, I, I don't have that, I don't think. Uh, well, I was moving a few things into the new studio with electricity because before that I was working without electricity. Um, okay. Then I have January 6th of 1970. Jerry wrote again. And this time, she was pretty upset because O'Keefe was difficult to live, work for. She said, I've even gotten sick because she has money. She thinks you have to do what people, what she say. So I hope I can get a job at Taos or maybe I'll go back. So she was at home. Whenever they had an argument, she would go home and, and wait a week. And then O'Keefe would call her up and ask her to come back. So uh, in the meantime, she... Uh, I don't know about, about the art. I don't see what she's saying here. Uh, but March 27th, 1970, I'm working very hard. I'm happy. This was a letter that was uh, uh, in response to her help. I went out on the 16th of 70. This, this letter is signi significant, and I did put it on my website. It's where I talk about the pebbles in my hand and the tombstones, and the, I found the pebbles left on the tombs by family members, and this is what got my rounded forms started. And uh, after that, I made the first rounded thing, and during the next four years of hanging on to that idea and not getting paid by anyone to do it, I discovered a mountain of energy symbols. On the best day, I create images, and on the low days, I stand by and work according to discipline. All right, so that, that had an effect on her because shortly after that she started to paint a, a pebble or a rock that later appeared in her 1970 Whitney show. Uh, to that point, she hadn't been painting. And then I was ill in July of 20, 29 of 1970, and I did write to her about the new forms. Uh, I've been ill, and that took July in the studio, but the work did not suffer, and there's a new form, Butterfly, and another one that makes seven altogether. The, and then the next one is coming, it'll be a white lily, and the two will take until September, after then I'll rest my hands. And then in uh, September 24th, or September 4th of 1970, I sent her a, a, some simple photographs that were taken by a traveling photographer. He walked around down up and down the streets of San Pedro Texas and a uh, little village where there were about a few thousand people and one telephone and three trucks and I was fortunate that I had one of the trucks. Uh, this was uh, very um, simple. We, we laid them on the floor on gray bogus paper and these were the first forms that I had uh, painted and, and you know, this is the sprouting seed and then these were the unpainted, unfinished uh, forms. I sent those size pictures, five by seven, to her. And to have those developed, I had to go uh, hours away into Guadalajara to a uh, photography. Uh, there wasn't any place to develop photos out where I lived in the rural area. Then O'Keefe had a show at the Whitney, and I received this invitation a week before the show, September 28th. And I think that show was the 8th or 7th, 8th, something like that. I didn't open it, but in October. So it was absolutely impossible for me to leave uh, and even drive there if, if I were, if I had had the money. 
Uh, and then I called her on the phone afterwards. Uh, on uh, it cost eighty-seven pesos, which was uh, twelve pesos equaled a dollar at the time. Twelve point five pesos were one dollar, and I let me think. I oh. I'll put those back in order. Uh, she did, as a result, uh, help me and send some things. Um, all right, and then finally, she sewed, sent a letter. More will come to you soon. And what was the date to that letter? Uh, Is there any date on the envelope? Well, on this one, the envelope would be October 20th. Uh, that would be October 20th of 1970. That was her show. That was the year of her show. Okay. So that was after her show was over that she sent a check. Uh, and the check of $100 arrived, but it was I wasn't able to cash it because it did not have your signature. So that showed she was quite in stress at that time. I'm sure she was. Uh, and if you have trouble with this, she said, send it back to me. I'll get it typed up for you. Uh, and that was November. Meanwhile, you know, I was hanging on pretty thin ice at that time. I'm sorry this went to unsigned if you have received it. Uh, and so on. Hastily, O'Keefe. Uh, finally, we get to the point where I'm pretty strong again, and I have uh, attached a story by a writer friend of mine. Two white lilies. Then I decided I got this rather unhappy letter, which says I haven't shown any this item I had left the bud to anyone. Uh, I could show it to Mrs. Seth if you could do anything with it. Otherwise, it's in the box in my garage. I couldn't get a evaluation on it because uh, you haven't sold anything. It was a very short uh, letter, letting me know that uh, she was finished with that. And uh, uh, probably going to uh, be, you know, ch make a change of course uh, in the future, and she certainly did. On June eighth of seventy one, I said I will like to see you and come and show you. Uh, I'll pick up the form, the bud, during that week of July fifteenth, and I'm enclosing ten colored prints of the current work of the same size. May I come then, and. Here they are. These were the ten uh, pieces that I actually had eight and a half by eleven photos made in Mexico City or Guadalajara, rather, and sent those to her in a package. Uh, finally, she accepts them. She says, "Thank you for the photographs." June 29th. I was very interested to see them. Then I came to Santa Fe. Lenoir wrote an article in the Santa Fe in the New Mexican about my artwork that was hanging in Jean Seth's Canyon Road Gallery, hosted an opening for artist Milton Greer last weekend, and at the same time Mrs. Seth was able to introduce the work of an exciting, capable artist to Santa Fe, Mem Mero Tuma, who has been living in the past few years in Lake Chapala, Mexico. But she does mention that uh, there is a, a tremendous impact of the, on the pastels and uh, the point where the organic is visible, simplified, and so on, consists of also several plastic forms that hang on the wall. And then uh, after that, O'Keefe introduced me to Doris Bree, her agent in New York City, and that I wrote a thank you note, thank you for getting me started with Jean Seth and Miss Bree, who's interested in handling the forms. I'm coming to Santa Fe next week, and I'll call you when I arrive. Meanwhile, from uh, August till October, I was resting in Chicago, back with my parents. Finally, we we'll get uh, down to December 3rd, 71. I gave her a plant. Uh, she said she didn't care for the black form that she originally had purchased, which was back in the beginning. Uh, she said that uh, it it was never very. It, it has. It may have been uninterest. It may have been uninteresting to me because I was so aggravated with you. But I don't know. It's always seemed dead and uninteresting. It was a rather negative and harsh 